Good evening, welcome to Philosophy and Ethics. I just wanted to take a little bit of your time to talk about the provision we have at Tuxford Academy in Philosophy and Ethics, the expectations we have of students and hopefully answer any questions you might have. I wanted to start by talking about why students might want to choose Philosophy and Ethics as an A-level option. That they have Philosophy and Ethics CSE and they've really enjoyed it and they want to dive in a bit deeper. If that's the case, brilliant. If they haven't studied it at GCSE, that's not a problem. At A-level, we hope that our philosophy and ethics provision enables students to have a really good think about the big questions in life. Do we exist? Does God exist? How do I know what is right? Should I always do what is right? How can I apply that in business? How can I apply that in war? Philosophy and ethics A-level also gives students a really vast set of career opportunities. One of the big examples of this is the politics, philosophy and ethics degree offered at Oxbridge, which a lot of world leaders opt to do. This obviously isn't the only option. Uh, there are lots and lots of choices out there that you can make. Big businesses, finance, medicine, they all really revere philosophy and ethics as an A-level. It shows a lot of balance. It shows a lot of empathy that these companies and organisations might be looking for in their staff. Furthermore, philosophy and ethics um, really enables reflection and self-growth. We hope our students leave really understanding more about themselves. We find that students who take philosophy and ethics really succeed in other humanities and social science A-levels. This is because of a cross in terms of essay style and technique, but also in the manner of thinking, the manner of teaching, and sometimes the topics covered. Beyond anything else, philosophy and ethics at A-level really develops oracy, which for degrees at university and businesses alike are really looking for, your ability to verbalise your ideas effectively with reason. The course is split, split into three sections, philosophy, ethics and development in Christian thought. This is taught over five lessons a week in two years by myself and Mrs Fretwell. I take on the first part of the course, which is philosophy. Uh, at A1, sorry, at level one, we talk about the ancient Greeks, such as Plato and Aristotle, the idea of the body and the soul in terms of do we have a soul? Can it leave our body? The existence of God and arguments for that. We look at the cosmological and the teleological argument that we might have looked at at GCSE, but in a lot more depth. The problem of evil, would an all loving or powerful God allow the evil to exist in the world? and religious experience in terms of miracles and reasons that people might well believe in God from what they have experienced. In the second year, we look at the nature of God, his qualities, and whether or not it's actually worth talking about any of it in terms of does religious language have any meaning? Meanwhile, Mrs. Fretwell takes on responsibility for the ethics course, which is structured a little bit differently from philosophy. In ethics, students learn a variety of ethical theories, such as natural law, situation ethics, utilitarianism, conscience, and then they apply them to various topics. The three key ones being euthanasia, business ethics, and sexual ethics. So there's a lot of crossover between the different theories and the different topics there. The final unit of the topic is development in Christian thought, or DCT. We split this between us uh, and I teach across the two years, death and the afterlife, the idea of Augustine and his life, uh, knowledge for God's existence, pluralism, liberation theology and Marx and secularism. Meanwhile, Miss Fretwell teaches person of Jesus, Christian moral principles, Christian moral actions and gender. These units are really interesting and they're only brought in in the last three years. Some of them have a real historical element. Uh, because the church groups who they consulted on the new A-level, they really wanted students to have an understanding of where Christianity has come from. However, there are also some units they've put in there which really criticise religion and they look at whether or not religion is successful, whether it should be taught, how it can lend itself to life in our society and whether it enables or disables violence and, and or, or whether it provides peace. So there's a real balance here um, of Christianity and whether or not it's beneficial or not beneficial to the world and where it's come from. In terms of the exams, we follow the OCR specification. And if you're really interested, you can look it up. It's the H573 code. 
Uh, at the end of the second year, there are three two hour exams, each one having three 40 mark questions. There is only one style of question in philosophy and ethics A level, and it is worth 40 marks. So we are looking, I'm not going to lie to you, we are looking at a fairly long essay. So students will, in order to get their A level, write nine 40 mark questions. There is no coursework element to the philosophy and ethics course whatsoever. Obviously, last year we didn't take the exams, but in the year before we we attained 100% A star to C. In fact, our students all achieved approximately one whole grade above their target. Philosophy and ethics at GCSE and A level is consistently one of the highest performing subjects in the academy, and we intend for this to continue. As well as being incredibly successful, philosophy and ethics also enables students to have the opportunity to visit Auschwitz during their time. We take a trip over to uh, Krakow in a half term where we visit Krakow itself and have a tour of the city. We visit the uh, Schindler's factory, which they've been created into a brilliant museum about the Holocaust. And we spend a day at Auschwitz I and Auschwitz Birkenau in the evening in the salt mines, which if you've not seen them, I'm not going to ruin them, but they are a fairly incredible uh, place to go. We've taken the trip on numerous occasions and it's really successful. It's really enlightening. We try and keep the budget as low as possible in order to enable as many students to go as possible. Uh, it's, it's really enjoyable. And if you've got any questions about it, don't hesitate to ask me. Obviously, at the moment, it's on hold because of uh, various national and global crises, uh, but as soon as we can put it back into play, we absolutely will be doing. So in order to uh, get onto the A-level course in philosophy and ethics, we ask for one of these two things. If you have taken GCSE philosophy and ethics, we look for a grade five or above. If you haven't taken the course, we look for a grade five or above in your English literature GCSE. This is because there is, as we mentioned, a high level of writing and a demand that you be able to read and understand some really deep, difficult texts. If you have any questions though about the course requirements or anything else that I've talked about, please do not hesitate to come and speak to me or to send me an email. My email address is just there. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye bye.